Ah, uh, greetings and salutations, my excellent friends. I hope you're off to a great day. It is time for Question of the Week. This week's question comes from Japan, from a viewer, first initial D, and I thought it quite important to address, so I thought I'd make a personalized video response to share my opinion on this very important topic. Now, D writes, he says, hello, I'm a Japanese guy and I apologize for my poor English in advance. I watched a couple of your videos that have interested me. Recently, I study Korean history and I'd like to hear your opinion on Korea from a foreigner's point of view. More and more Japanese, including me, have become aware how insane Koreans are and whole Korea is, especially when it comes to Japan-related issues in the last 10 years. Please don't take it as racism. My country is a victim that has been damaged by their anti japanese Japanese propagation. I'm assuming that means propaganda. Uh, for years, could you let me hear your honest opinion on historical issues between Korea and Japan at first? And there's three questions here. Uh, before I go into the questions, I just want to kind of clarify something. Um, Unfortunately, in both countries, Korea and Japan, the media likes to sensationalize things. They like to make things very, very exciting and very, I would say, lead-oriented, meaning that they really want to capture the attention of the newspaper reader or the, re the viewer on television. So you'll have something occur in Japan and that will spark a very small population here in Korea to do something what many call radical. So if uh, individuals in Japan make a comment about Dokdo or Takashima, there will be a small group of individuals that have in the past set themselves on fire, uh, inflicted bodily harm, and while the number of people that do these horrific acts are very, very small, it gets sensationalized in the media overseas and it makes the country appear that way. Uh, the same thing happens over in Japan where you have individuals making uh, some hate-oriented speech towards Koreans and get, that gets blown way out of proportion and it leads the, gives the impression rather that all of Japan hates Korea. So just keep in mind that the actual state of affairs of individuals here in Korea with regard to their opinion about Japan is not necessarily what's reported in the media. If you go walking down the street here in Korea, I have really never found an individual that absolutely hates Japan's citizens. They don't hate the Japanese people. They tend to disagree very strongly with some of the policies of the government. But that is where the, I guess, the disagreement ends. There's really no animosity between individuals. So just keep that in mind when you look at what are quote unquote are insane issues or insane responses from Korea. Um, the same can be said on, on both sides with Japanese responses towards some of the things that Korea does here in the region. So uh, that's going to be the basis for my discussion here. Personally, I don't see any animosity uh, on an individual basis between Korea and Japan based on those that I interact with all around the peninsula. So the, the questions that D asked, uh, first up, what do you think about Dokdo Takashima issue? Do you think that Dokdo Takashima belongs to Korea? Now, personally, I believe that the islets in the body of water between Korea and Japan do belong to Korea. Now, the reason why I say that is mainly by legal definition. So if you take into account what the International Court of Justice, the ICJ, which Japan wanted to take Korea to to finally settle this issue, um, looks at, they look at four different things. And the two most important are acquiescence and effective control. So if you take a look at these small islands, let's take a look at the first issue, acquiescence. Since the end of the uh, Second World War, 
Japan has never really tried to physically claim those islets. So they have acquiesced, they have given up control of those islets to another party, that being Korea. Effective control, Korea actually has boots on the ground. They have a Coast Guard settlement there. They have people living on the island, or islets rather. So they control it. So from a legal standpoint, they fit all the requirements. So that makes the islets, Dokdo, Korean territory. Now you can go back and forth about the historical relevance, and that's pretty much going to be moot. It's whoever effectively controls a landmass, that's who owns it. So if we take that to Japan and we take a look at the Senkaku Daiyu issue between Japan and China, there is a fairly strong case that the little islets, the submerged area that's causing all kinds of tension in the East Asian area, should have been returned to China following the Second World War. However, the U.S. really didn't enforce that. So effectively, that became Japanese territory. And China acquiesced that control because they never really made an effort to assert that this should have been part of Chinese territory following the end of the war until after the American influence left. So they acquiesced control of the islets. Now, effectively, Japan does control the islets right now. They control that little area in the sea, but China is trying to reassert itself. So they're challenging that effective control. So that's how I view the issue. So yes, Dokdo is Korean territory for that reason. And number two, do you believe Japan enforced Koreans to become comfort women as they claim? Do you believe that they were really sex slaves? Does Korea have a right to denounce Japan for that? Yes, I, I do. I believe there's overwhelming evidence, not only here in Korea, but throughout Southeast Asia, of the way that Japanese soldiers uh, forced young women to become sexual slaves. I think that's well documented. I think that even in the Japanese government, they have finally come to uh, make that proclamation recently. And I think it is fair to denounce Japan for that practice, just as it is fair to denounce any country for human rights violations. Uh, if you look at the past of the way that Europe invaded the Middle East during the Crusades, or you look at the way that Europe invaded uh, Central and South America during the Golden Age of Exploration, you know, no country on this planet has not inflicted egregious, egregious harm on a foreign culture. So uh, I, I think the claims are valid, and I think the criticism is also valid. What I don't think is appropriate is the back and forth type issues uh, that statements have been made in the Japanese government to try and minimize the impact. I think that just acknowledging it and moving forward would be a much more appropriate way to handle the situation and bring about a lot of healing in the process. Uh, and number three, do you think Japan has to apologize or hasn't made enough apology to Korea for her occupation? Do you believe in Korea's claim that Japanese occupation was really cruel? Uh, I actually did a video on this and I'll put the annotation here and you can go watch that. It's about a 20 minute video about why I think uh, many Koreans and other East Asians feel Japan still hasn't apologized. Um, do I think Japan has to apologize. Um, as I said in this video, um, Japan has apologized many, many times. The most recent, I believe, is in 2012 uh, when an official member of the Japanese government made a statement in the Philippines. Uh, what many, I guess, take issue with is the changing of the words or trying to lessen the impact of those statements over time. And that's what really people have a problem with here in Korea, is that if you're going to say you're sorry, then follow up with actions and don't try to back away from the statements later on. Uh, do I think that they have made enough apology about the occupation? Again, probably yes. I, I think the statements have come out several times that Japan has, has made appropriate remarks, but again, sometime later, those remarks are then 
uh, lessened by another another member of the Japanese government. And that's really what the problem is. So once you make an apology, you need to stick with it and, and stay with it and, and don't change the wording over time. Uh, the second part of the question, do I believe Koreans claim that Japan's, uh, that the Japanese occupation was really cruel? Yes, I do. And the reason why I say that is I, I've spoken to those that have lived through the colonial period, but also my uncle was a U.S. service member in the Philippines during World War II, and he survived the death march. So I know how cruel the Japanese military can be. So I do have some family experience with the cruelty uh, that was carried out by Japanese service members during the Second World War. So uh, those are my answers to your questions. If you have any other questions, you can always send those to me at questions at chiranger.com. I really do enjoy getting them, and I enjoy making these personal type response videos. So if you have any questions or comments about this particular video, please drop them down in the comment section. Until next time, remember to be true to yourself and always be awesome.